Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're watching Ted Lasso. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing more of season two of Ted Lasso. I, I had mentioned this, I think in, in the last reaction that there's a heavier feel to this season to where there's still like the humor that we love. And, you know, we got like the rom-com episode and the Christmas episode, and there's like all of this goodness that's coming our way. It just feels heavier. Um, not only with the way the last episode ended with Ted kind of having another panic attack and I don't know where it came from and why, but I do know that he lets things build up. Um, it's not that he has false positivity, but I think he tries to keep himself in that headspace so he doesn't have to feel bad. And sometimes we have to feel bad. And unfortunately, when he feels bad, he kind of turns to alcohol. And that really bothers me um, because that that's almost kind of the way some people deal with things when they don't feel that they have another place to go to. And I thought maybe he was close enough with Coach Beard to talk to him about that. But with Coach being with, with Jane, which is a whole nother issue, uh, I, I don't feel like he has someone to really um, connect with. And he has connected with Rebecca sometimes. Um, and, and like she saw his other panic attack. And when she saw him leave the field, um, she kind of knew what was going on and she couldn't find him. And he, of course, is in the therapist's office, which I am so happy that he realized that he needed to confront it and he needs to face it. And he needs to work through those issues. Will it go away in one session? No. Like... Like there's, there's a lot that probably led him up to that moment. And it, it's like the divorce and being away from his family is just like the straw that broke the camel's back. He's probably had a lifetime of dealing with this kind of stuff. Um, he had mentioned that his father died when he was really young. So I imagine that kind of influenced Ted a little bit as well. Um, when he's doing the, uh, the, the dart game with Rupert, he kept saying like people underestimated me and people judged me. And that like can weigh on a person. So I'm sure there's a little bit of that going on as well, especially when you get called a wanker repeatedly. <laughs> like I've never heard the word wanker more in my life and I've actually started using it. It's now part of my lexicon. I, I, I definitely say it a couple times a day and I'm like, the show has like a great influence to where it makes me feel so wonderful. And then like it has the other influence where <laughs> I'm saying like wanka all the time, <laughs> which I appreciate and love. The other heaviness that I'm kind of feeling is a little bit from Nate. Um, we had like one whole episode where we kind of concentrated on him trying to get a table for his parents' wedding anniversary and trying to please his father. And his father's like never happy about anything. And, you know, Nate started out being kind of this meek person and and Ted and Coach Beard have kind of brought him out of his shell and, and Higgins along the way, you know, they're the diamond dogs. Ow! <laughs> I don't know if that's annoying or not, but I'm going to keep doing it. But like Nate has these moments where like he's very angry. You can see the anger, especially when Roy comes back to the team and he's out on the pitch and like Nate was wearing a suit and it's just like it's a game suit and he wasn't wearing his normal uh, like coach's gear. And then Roy shows up in a very Roy Kent way, wearing all black and is on the sidelines coaching. And you can tell that that really affected Nate. Like, Nate wasn't happy that he was there. And it wasn't that he even hates it, but, like, I think he constantly feels like an underdog or that he's overshadowed by somebody or that, like, he won't be taken seriously. Um, and he actually ends up being the person that calls the play that wins the game at the end of the episode. Um, and he doesn't really know... Um, how to handle that, I think. You know, he's he's looking at Twitter to like see his name being mentioned and then he didn't know he was alive. And so he was kind of saying, like he was being Nate, like where, you know, like he he says something and then he's like, oh, shoot, this is live. And like, you know, he starts stumbling over himself a little bit. Um, that's why I like Nate is because he's not perfect. He's imperfect and, and he's sweet, but that's changing and it bothers me. Um, the, the highlights have been Jamie Tart, which I never thought that I'd say that. Roy Kent coaching him and telling him, like, you got to be an asshole. Like, like that's that's your job. You're, you're the guy on this team that's supposed to do that. Not to your teammates and, and not to everybody in life outside of the game, but on the pitch against the other team. And that's his role. 
And I love that for Jamie. I love that, especially because he's on our team. <laughs> if we were playing against him, I wouldn't love it so much. <laughs> but I love that Roy like like knows that that's Jamie's strength and tells Jamie to to play on that. And and I love how Roy brought out, you know, the the child in Isaac that the that child that loved the game and didn't take it too seriously and it wasn't all about like winning at all costs. It was like winning but like having fun while you do it and i love that for isaac and you kind of have seen him like always kind of like having a side eye at isaac since like the the beginning of the first season and like when he names him captain it's like yeah duh and and he still kind of like has like this this relationship with isaac that i think um we'll, we'll continue to see isaac needing to draw on roy kent uh, and his leadership and his coaching skills. And I really love that the therapist is kind of, uh, like she's a main character, she really is. Um, she was like, oh, I'll go get a drink with you guys, you know, like, like just one. But I do love that before she goes to get the drink, she finds Ted in her office. And I think she was kind of waiting for Ted to crack. Like she, she knows that she, you can't pressure people into going to therapy and to talk about the problems. Um, and I think she could see from a mile away that Ted was not dealing with something that he should have been dealing with, whether it is the divorce, being away from home, you know, uh, childhood issues, you know, all sorts of things. And I think that like, I think that like she was, she was waiting for him to have his breakdown and is ready to help lift him up. Like I said, it won't take one session. It won't take two sessions he might be in therapy for the rest of his life and i'll tell you that i absolutely am a proponent of therapy i think everyone should go whether you think you have problems or not there's always something that is keeping you from being your best self and standing in your way and i think that it is 100 percent fantastic i don't think i would have made this channel without therapy i don't think that i would have had the courage to put myself out there so i'll tell you therapy this is the way Okay, guys, I'm really excited to get back into this episode, especially after seeing Ted have a breakdown in the last one. I, I don't I don't know what to expect um, with these episodes. I don't know if it's going to be long and drawn out because they never are. But I feel like Ted kind of um, exercising his demons might take a couple episodes. I would love... I'd love if that lasted a little bit longer just because I think Jason Sudeikis does such a great job. Like, he has blown me away as an actor. Like, we always knew he was funny. Comedically, he's always been hilarious. Uh, and and to, like, see the more serious moments and, and the harder dramatic moments and the breakdowns. Now, I know he was going through a divorce when a lot of this was being filmed, so I'm sure he could pull that from real life, which is, I'd say, unfortunate, but I think that that's what most people do um, when they're actors, is that they have to pull from real life situations and feelings and things that are deep down. So I would really just love to see that from Jason Sudeikis, like, like not only the drama, but being Ted Lasso and being this positive guy and just seeing how he recovers from it. Um, I think uh, that performance is gonna be amazing. Okay, guys, I'm excited for everybody but Rupert. <laughs> Even Jamie Tart, like, it's like funny how he was like bottom feeder. And now I'm like, I fucking love that guy. <laughs> Still a wanker, though. All right, guys, let's get into it. Hi, babe. Hi, babe. Hi, babe. Why is he everywhere? Hi. She, she doesn't seem thrilled that he's there. Hi. Bye. What's going on there? Boy. You're not going to your office. I was just gonna go to the cafe and get a cup of tea first. Don't go with her. Can I come? No. Too much. Space. It's a beautiful thing. Nate's got flowers for somebody. Is it the chick from the restaurant? No. Uh... Oh no. You say you go. <laughs> oh, thank you. What's the location? Oh, nothing. You know, just just an ordinary day. <laughs> mm. Gonna show him Twitter, and he's probably not gonna care. Oh, would you look at that? They say humility is not thinking less of yourself, thinking about yourself less. He just wants you to recognize him. Oh, Nate. I'm sorry, buddy. 
<laughs> I hope you feel better. I'm actually feeling a lot better, so I don't even know if this is necessary, really. It is. It is. so comfortable. Uh-huh. She knows better than you do. You know what? Hey, I'm, I'm going so to uncomfortable. Your shoes yeah. are on the couch. Yes, you know. Like <laughs> what is that? Bunkum. No. <laughs> he's so cute, though, but like, he's so uncomfortable. All right. <laughs> so, there you go. Yeah. There wow. We go. It was quite the process to get him comfortable. You good, buddy? Yeah? Okay, good. <laughs> Look at her just observing him. Why don't you tell me what happened the other night? Yeah, I don't want to do this. You're going to have to, Ted. I love Ted, and I just want him to be all right. There are two things you can't ever let the other team know. All right, the first one is your home address. Because mark my <laughs> words, you'll start having food deliveries and SWAT teams showing up your front door 24-7. Oh, God. SWAT teams? The second thing that you don't want your opponent to know is that you're tired. Offense, y'all gonna stick around here with Coach Nate and Beard. Defense, you're coming with me and Roy. Come on, let's go on the hop. Oh, I forgot about Sam and banter with Rebecca. Yeah, those drills better be lit. Now you got a reputation to keep up. <laughs> yes, very funny. Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> we get to be trained by the Wonder Kid himself. Ooh. <laughs> very funny, Colin. You stand up comic now. Kind of ironic because I sat you down at the match the other day. Right? Oh! I don't like it. Holly, Holly, I can sit this one out, okay? You're not supposed to make it personal, Nate. I'm a strong and capable man. I'm yeah, a you strong are. And capable man. Yes, you are. That's my mantra. Cool. Oh, Coach Beard. I want to hug Colin. Again, the hugs aren't for them, they're for me, so I feel better. Sometimes three dots appear, but then they go away again. It's over, man. I've messed no, up. No, you haven't. It doesn't matter, right? I mean, I don't care if she- oh, oh! Three dots! Three dots! Three dots! I love that when that happens. Oh. Mm. Come on, Rebecca. I think you'd be so happy to see Sam show up. I'd love to meet up, but I'm worried that you can't live up to the fantasy I've created in my head. Fair enough. I'm gonna let my insecurities keep me from possibly finding my one true love. Higgins? His favorite film is Ratatouille. That's worrying, right? No, I, I've never seen it, but I don't think so. All relationships are a nightmare. Oh, My Rebecca. relationship is the oxygen that gives me life. Apart from Leslie's marriage, which is a bloody greeting card of some kind. I love that. And you and Roy are just aggravatingly perfect in every way. Oh, thank you. Hmm. I just feel like we're around each other all the time. Mm -hmm. Wherever I go, it's like he's my shadow. Mommy's my adorably hairy shadow. Smooth. Why are you jazz skating? <laughs> were you talking about me? Yeah, no. we were talking about you. <laughs> I love how Keely is always so honest. I love it. I love how good they are together now. Higgins and Rebecca's relationship is so much better. Seriously, I've got a lot of work to do. So if you're going to be here, you need to go and sit quietly on the couch and read your book, yeah? And maybe talk to him about boundaries. Might be a smart idea. What? Well, I'm doing exactly what you said. I'm sitting quietly and I'm reading my book. Well, look at how cute he looks. Exactly what I tell you to do is so fucking hot. <laughs> Why is he there all the time? Doesn't he have a house of his own? I'm surprised you came back. Yeah, well, I don't quit things. Nope. How long these little chats you do take? Sessions typically last 50 minutes. But you charge by the hour, right? That's correct. Because I think it's bullshit. You don't know me. We don't have history. That's good. And yet you just expect me to spill my guts about all the gory details of my life. The fights, the mistakes, my deep, dark secrets. You ain't happening. listening because you care about me. No. No, you ain't listen to me because you paid to listen to me. She's an expert. I mean, you say you're only interested in the truth. And yet here you are, charging an hourly rate for only 50 minutes of work. Like I said, it's bullshit. Mm. Yeah, therapy with his wife messed him up. These machines, eh? Uh. We've never been so connected, yet never further apart. 
Is that what you were going to say? Yes, yes, it was. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, right, okay. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see you later. Have a good day. You too. <laughs> Bye. See you, sir. See, they would be so good together. Nate, put the phone Hello, down, dude. The new pens have be nice to him. I'll just leave him here. Yeah, right. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there, Colin. It's the camouflage. <laughs> be nice to Colin. I just wondered, well, I was wondering if I'd done anything to annoy you. Uh-oh. Nate. <sighs> Just because I felt like you got angry at me for taking the piss yesterday, Danny and Jamie did the same thing and you didn't get mad at them. You see, Jamie and Danny are like Picasso and Gauguin. Pedophiles. Artists. <laughs> oh, Colin. Well, you like a painting at a Holiday Inn. You know, you don't inspire, you don't move people, you do the job, so just do the job. I feel like that Tyra Banks meme where she's like screaming at the girl saying, I believed in you. I was rooting for you. Yeah, beard. Do something. So upsetting. I adored Nate. Little prick. Also need some space. Space from what? Roy, he's sitting in my office reading Da Vinci Code. Oh, well, mm, bad timing. Just tell the person who can actually do something about it. Roy. Sometimes it's good to bottle things up. That's how we get, you know, pickles. Mm -mm. You can take your name off your shirt and then put it back on for big old. <coughs> Hi, babe. You talking about me? Yes, yes definitely. <laughs> it's like an intervention. Keely, just tell him. What's going on? I was watching Sex and City. No, what's going on? Oh, enjoy. I'm going to read. Cool. Can you read somewhere else? And I have let you in. Can I just say Carrie is toxic as hell? Shut up. Shut up. Yes. Shut up. Keely's gonna snap. Where's like a spiked belt around the Fucking hell, boys. What? Do you want me to read it to you? No. I just want to watch my TV show and you're fucking ruining it for me. Just need some time without you reading or turning me on or just fucking being there all the time. Well, you've been making out to everyone like I'm following you around like a needy, clingy fucking fridge magnet. Oh, I'm an idiot. Oh, fuck this! Yeah, you probably should have talked instead of snapped, but... Mm. Turn off Sex in the City. That's just going to create more trauma anyway. Coach Nate Shelley with heroically ballsy late in the game strategy to put Richmond to the semis. I think we can all so agree. full of yourself, Nate. An excellent suit. Oh, go. Oh, oh I love oh. it. You were rude, Colin. Mm hmm. Not just rude, it was personal and weird. Mm hmm. Do better. Do better. Wait, this is more. Enigma. He looked up. <laughs> Hi. Hmm, grow up, Roy. Although talking about your personal business to other people is not great. I was quite offended by what you said about my profession. That just because a therapist is being paid, they don't actually care. Let me ask you something. Would you coach for free? Yeah, I would. But do you? No, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And yet you care about your players, right? Yes, ma'am. Then why would you assume it's not the same for me? I'm really sorry about that, you know, getting all worked up and saying stuff like that and storming out of here. You needed to say it, though. Fight or flight is a natural response. You just happen to do both. Mm -hmm. Impressive <laughs> range, really. <laughs> well, I can't be your mentor without occasionally being your tall mentor. Ooh, I like that. Ooh, yeah, that's a lassoism right there. I just want, before we started, just to... Um... Well, basically, I just wanted to make an apology. Colin, yesterday I was a bit of a... Uh... Asshole, prick, cock, wounded butterfly. Wounded butterfly. Cocky, prickish, wounded butterflies, asshole. Um, I really am sorry. It, it won't happen again. I'm sure it will. 
Not miss them. Okay. <laughs> Anything I need to address? Coach Beard handled it. Jamie! What the fuck were you doing? Roy. Pulling my defender out of his path. He's your teammate. He needs you to come to the ball and support him. Respectfully, coach. That ain't what he needs from me. He needs me to give him space. Oh, no. And since he's my teammate, I should trust him to do what's best. Right? Is that a fucking life lesson from Jamie to Roy? <laughs> I know, right? Fuck! <laughs> and Jamie didn't even know anything about that. Coach Nate, we have a gift for you. Yeah, yeah. What's that? <laughs> yeah. Wonder kid. Wow. It was Will's idea. <laughs> Aww. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Well, no, thank you. Um, I mean, I did, I did say Wonderkind. But no, this is great. Thank, it's really funny. It's thank man, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. I would love to get an official statement about your early departure from the Spurs match. An official statement? Oh. Gas. Well, I thought say folks gas. knew I had food poisoning. <clears throat> food poisoning, yep. Mm -hmm. Not from here. <laughs> I'd love a personal quote, if possible. Well, I had food poisoning, but I'm fit as a fiddle now. So you had food poisoning, and you are fit as a fiddle now. Why do I feel like Trent's going to twist that a little bit? Why? Are you leaving? What? Well, the bath doesn't solve the problem. It didn't give her any space. Now, you are not going to see or hear me for at least three hours. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> it's because of Jamie Tart. <laughs> Stop looking at Twitter. If you ever do anything to humiliate me again, I'll make you like a fucking misery. We're going to move on. Hopefully the next episode is hilarious and I can forget about Nate being a complete asshat. Yeah, so where did we leave off? Ted Lasso is driving me fucking crazy. I love that a therapist has a therapist. And when he gets anywhere close to being vulnerable, he fires off a zinger. Some obscure reference to something very specific to a 40-year-old white man from middle America. <laughs> So he's refusing to be vulnerable, right? Sounds like someone I know. <laughs> Stop it. Me and Coach Lasso are nothing alike. Probably are a lot alike. He uses humour to deflect. You use your intelligence. Please, I didn't harness my Cervantage nature to alienate people and isolate myself. Okay, I hear that. <laughs> Mind your dog. He hates that sweater. <laughs> Jeez, Doc. Oh, God. How are we starting like the episode like that? Oh, my gosh. Oh, everybody's got phone calls from their dad. Hello, daddy. Sam, do you know why I'm calling? What now? Erythium oil has just been ordered to stop operating in Nigeria. Wait, what? what that? That's incredible. And you were yeah? the butterfly whose wings made this happen. Aww. I'm so proud of you, my son. Thank you, dad. I love you. I love you too. Okay, bye bye. Poor Jamie. Oh. Hey, we did. <laughs> Poor Colin. I haven't found a term I like yet for when I tell people I'm taking a shit. What do you use? <laughs> I need to reapply my lip liner. Men don't know what that means, and women understand it requires time and focus. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh, say fucking yes! Yes. 
Yes. When you realize it's Sam, you're going to be so happy. Captain. Yeah, bro. I would like to ask you for a haircut. Oh. Are you sure, bro? What does that mean? All right. Off the train. Colin is like, he's choking again. Oh, shit. Poor Colin. The poor kid. Doc, gonna be okay, Doc? Yes, that scan seemed fine. Good, good. No intracranial hemorrhaging or uh, subdural hematoma? No, you seem to know a lot about brain injuries. Yeah, well, you know, I watched a lot of Grey's Anatomy in my early 30s. <laughs> and scrubs. And actually, you know, I coach football. Well, well, she does have a concussion, so you'll need to rest for a few days, okay? But apart from that, your husband can take you home right now. <laughs> Let me help you out with that, sweetheart. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Look at them building a relationship. Phoebe. Would you mind doing some coloring while I talk to your uncle? Yes, Miss Bevan. What did she do? Phoebe's dad. Oh, he's a piece of shit. Mm. Is he alive? Sorry, yeah, he's a living piece of shit. <laughs> right. We've got a bit of an issue with Phoebe's behavior. Mm. Today she called one of her classmates an apathetic shit fucker. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Do you have any idea where she might be getting this from? He has no idea. Mm -mm. Nope. Uncle Roy, can we get ice cream? Fuck no! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> F no! <laughs> Stop smiling at him like that. How did you know I was in the hospital? Oh, you left me a bunch of voice notes? Yeah, 32 to be exact. Ted is Sharon. I can't come to the phone right now, but if you want to talk my ear off about some bullshit because you're too afraid to properly emote, leave a message. Mm -hmm. Beep. Ooh, truth bomb. I didn't mean it. Oh, come on now. You meant it a little bit. You meant it a lot. What is the big deal about the haircut? Is it like bad luck? Or is he like, like the guy to give a haircut? He's the barber of the team. He gets them lines right? I don't know. What is up with his lighting? <laughs> what is the big deal? Bro? Oh, yeah. oh, mm. and I mean, bro. Isaac's an artist with those clippers. Okay. He only gives you one haircut per season. So you try and save that for a very special occasion. I'm not using mine until I'm married. Okay. Or I get circumcised. Oh. oh. Hopefully married. I believe this could be something very special. Oh. Me too. Very ominous at the same time, right? Isaac, find your center. Oh. oh! This is how he gives a haircut? It's so artistic. If Sam's hair looks exactly the same as when we started, I'm gonna die laughing. Dad, I don't want you there. You're abusive, and I don't like your influence. Until you can treat me better, then you are, will be welcome back into my life. Oh, Higgins. What can I do for you, Jamie? Um, can I get my dad and his two mates on the list of Wembley tickets, please? Of course. Um, family section? VIP? Put them in the car park for all I care. Mm. Fathers and sons. So tricky. They should really write songs about it. They do. Are you close to your dad? Um, ups and downs, like everyone. It's complicated. No, it's not complicated. It's just a dick. Mm -hmm. Every situation does exactly what a dick would do. Uh, open or closed? Uh, closed. You get less questions. Yeah. Why doesn't he have his own office? I mean, I know the therapist, but, like, they don't have any place else to put him. Thank you for the ice cream, Uncle Roy. Oi. <laughs> little chat. You can't swear, Phoebe. But you swear all the time. Because I'm a footballer. No one cares if we swear. It's part of the job. It's encouraged. Mm. But you can't be a doctor or a... Veterinarian for wild animals. Aww. It's very specific. I love that. I get concerned that I've been infecting you with the worst parts of me. No. I called that boy your name because he's a bully. And because of you, I stand up to bullies. Mm. Maybe we can stop swearing together. Oh, I don't Fuck you. <laughs> Thank you for walking me home. I'm good from here. Well, that's the fifth time you've said that. 
Oh, they have the same vice. Would you like some tea? Oh, hell no. <laughs> no, I like my water like Kyrie Irving likes his earth flat. No bubbles. <laughs> I would have finished the glass now by Ted, goodness. You got quite the scare today. And my job is teaching people how to overcome exactly what happened to me. I'm fine, thank you. Goodbye, Coach Lasso. You both need to talk to each other. Do not come back in for a glass of wine. <laughs> okay, good. Oh, the date! I'm like excited but scared. I don't want it to go badly. I want them to have a great time together and be okay with it. And I doubt that's going to happen, but... But I bet her and Sam won't even realize that they're on a date with each other. Uh, Miss Watson, uh, Rebecca. Ah, Sam! Look, stunning, as always. Thank you. Yes. Have a lovely evening. Sure, thank you, you too. Great haircut. Oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> she noticed. Keely says hi. Oh, uh, tell her I say hello. <laughs> Are they gonna realize it or not? Oh. oh shit! What? Oh shit! What? Shit! What? 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 No. What? 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 Why? We can't. I'm your boss. Then trade him. I mean, you're what? Like twenty-four? I'm twenty-one. Oh my god, I'm a pedophile. Well, that's that's a bit much. It can just be a funny coincidence that we both happen to turn up to the same fabulous restaurant alone and hungry. I mean, I'm quite hungry. <laughs> it's like a 20, 25 year age gap. Or, no, that's really bad math. No, it's probably accurate. Hey, Doc. So tonight, I'm just going to keep checking in on you every 20 minutes or so. You know, standard concussion protocol. But I'm going to change my voice every time I call you so it stays exciting for you. <laughs> Have you been feeling dizzy or nauseous? <laughs> <laughs> I adore this man so much. I was scared today. Really scared. I love riding my bike. It's my happy place. I was worried. I'll be too scared to enjoy riding ever again. Ted, I just wanted to tell you how I was feeling. Well, I appreciate it. it means a lot. Do you trust her now? Oh, okay. Ah! <laughs> no, no, never, never again. I mean it. I have to mean it. Yeah, yeah, of course. Good night. Thank you. Uh-oh. Uh. The Welcome to Wrexham episode where they're walking into Wembley. I got cold chills. So, like, this is so huge. Literally. Like, literally and figuratively. Just a regular old football pitch. I think you'll find it's the exact same size as our pitch back home on Nelson Road. Not exactly. What's that? It's 500 square yards bigger. Oh, wow. This is the biggest pitch in the country. Huge advantage for city. This sport has the loosiest, goosiest rules of all. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I remember being a little kid sitting in front of the television and watching Queen perform right over there. That was old Wembley. That field was even bigger. Oh, God. Well, it doesn't matter. Point is. <laughs> what an asshole. Before we win this match, we get Richmond tattoos. Already got one. Where? Mind your fucking business. <laughs> Me, you saucy minx. You okay, coach? No, I, I'm just doing some breathing exercises that Doc taught me, that's all. Uh... Guys, it's time. Big game. When I left the match against Tottenham, it, it, it wasn't because, uh, you know, my stomach was bothering me. It, it was because I had a panic attack. Good for you, Ted. I just want y'all to know the truth. We good? good. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 circle of trust, it better stay in with them. I need to confess something to you. Okay. I messed up the time zones on our transfer deadline, which is... Why we didn't sign up that amazing fullback from Brazil? It's okay. Okay. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. All good. 
Any other confessions? I don't read the scouting reports you guys write. I've lied every time they come up. They're boring and I won't do it. Oh. Come on, Coach Beard. Nate? I pretend to get ideas in the moment, but they're just good ideas I've had for months. I just time them to look spontaneous. It's a good move. Yeah. Yeah, illusion of the first time. There was one game this season where I was accidentally on mushrooms. Oh, well. <laughs> Drink tea from the wrong pot. Oops. All right, let's go kick their butts. Yeah. Butts on three. Works for me. One, two, three. Butts! How do you, Ted? Jamie Tart was a City player then, and he helped send Richmond down. Come on, Jamie. Redemption arc. I hate that Jamie's dad is here. I feel like that's going to mess with his head. It's the FA Cup semi-final, and it starts now. <laughs> Go, Manchester City! Right at the beginning. How's that not offside? Because he's only passively offside. I don't get this friggin' rule still up. No, I don't either, quite frankly. God. Clean the shit out of your eyes, you dickless wonder. Oh no, never mess with Mike Dean. Okay. Can't say that, mate, I'm sorry. There you go. Maybe that'll fire everyone up? We got it. And it's a penalty. <laughs> it's all going to shit. Shit. God fucking damn it. Come on now, coach. It is what it is. Yeah. It is what it is. Oh, oh, God. Sorry, Beard. The only nice thing I can say about Richmond today is that Sam Obisanya's hair looks absolutely fantastic. <laughs> and you can be sure Richmond's disappointment hangs heaviest on the head of a devastated Jamie Tart. Wow. It's on me arse. <laughs> Figured. Uh, Mr. Tart, you have a visitor. Says he's your father. <laughs> so you pups have no chance. Oh. Oh my God. My own flesh and blood. <laughs> Poor Jamie, my son. Maybe I'm thinking he's out still in Manchester and that's why he missed that sitter in the first half. Oh. I'm so glad everybody can see why Jamie is the way he is. Was. The way he was. Well, you know, can I go? Little moody bitch, just because you got your ass served to you on a plate, are you? <laughs> Don't speak to me like that. Huh? Don't speak to me like that. Good for you, Jamie. Good for you. Twaddling about with a bunch of amateurs! No offence, no offence! Don't turn your back on me, you pussy! Oh! oh. Ah. Oh. Don't you forget where you came from! Watch the door! Oh. Oops. Thank you, Coach Beard. Somebody hug him or something. Coach Lesser? My father killed himself when I was 16. <laughs> that happened to me and uh, to my mom. I'm so sorry, Ted. And look, I don't know if that's where maybe some of my issues stem from. But... No, it definitely is. <laughs> don't that make sense? Do you want to talk about it now? No, no, not right now. I, I need to get back inside of the team. I just wanted you to know. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't want to ride back with you guys. I'd rather go shake this off. And don't forget, tomorrow, it's your turn for uh, coffee at game film, right? Yeah. Bright and early. Hey coach, bird by bird. <laughs>
Oof. Fathers shape the man. They really do. Uh, I feel sorry that we let the fans down. Uh, we lost. Very badly. But we tried. You know, we gave it everything we had. And for me, that is okay. Because what's worse is not to try at all. To try is scary. But you have to put your hat out there. Otherwise, what's the point? Instant. Interesting. Not what I would do with the age difference, but to each their own. Love is love. Oh. He caught her in a rush. Why did you send me your address? For next time. And to see how quick you, quickly you'd leave your own home. Aww. She needs to be romanced, and he seems like he is a romantic. I don't want to ride back with you guys. I'd rather go shake this off. Oh, yeah, yeah. Makes me worried. I'm already kind of emotionally jolted. <laughs> You're gonna go on an adventure, Coach Beard? Do we even know Coach Beard's so first name? He looks like a John, doesn't he? Whoa. That was really dark, Coach Beard. Goodness, he's just a child. A look into Coach Beard's life. This is exciting. Wait, doesn't Jane live here? She moved in with him, right? About Coach Beard. What about him indeed? Coach Beard knew an aggressive offensive strategy was a mistake. He should not have let Ted, Nathan and Roy convince him otherwise. Coach Beard is Ted Lasso's number two. He's supposed to challenge him, not just be a sniveling lackey. Wow. I hate Coach Beard. Shut up, Thierry Henry. And after Richard Monlaw earned himself... <laughs> Are you losing your mind a little bit, Beard? Ted joining you? No. Jane coming? We broke up. Again? Shocking. <laughs> you must feel awful. Reason is powerless in the expression of love. I mean, about the match. What the hell was your thinking behind those tactics? May. May. Enjoy your beer. <laughs> Probably picked the wrong pub to go to. But come on. There's no <laughs> way you thought coming out on the attack was a good idea. So that would be illegal at the top? What does that mean? Rough match, mate. We thought you needed a hug. Oh, Paul is great. Do you want to talk about it? We can talk and drink as long as we talk about anything but the game and drink. This is what he needed. Little boys group. Yes. What's Ted like behind closed doors? How do you cope knowing the universe is infinite but your consciousness can end in a second? I love Paul. I'm so glad someone finally asked. <laughs> yeah, I got a few thoughts. Let's hear them. If this is all indeed a simulation, which everything in my experience suggests that it is, <laughs> then all we can do is tip our caps to the rascal pulling the strings. That's it, people! Look at all those glasses! Good grief! <laughs> a nightclub with uh, a church theme? <sighs> Where to next? What about... Bones and honey. Hmm. Yeah, I heard they once turned away Cher. Would you believe they did such a thing? I love Paul. <laughs> I think there's a dress code. <clears throat> there you go. <laughs> nice. I like Coach Beard's hat. Oh, the newsboy cap. I just love it. Such a good look. Do we know each other? I don't think we do, sir. May I see your membership card? University of Barcelona class of 2004? I went to Warwick, 2007. Oh, sorry. You looked older. <laughs> Shit. What is your name? My name is Sarah Coombs. What is your name? None of my business. I don't know what his strategy is, but I enjoy watching it. It's very important that we get in touch with uh, Sarah, Coombs. Sarah Coombs. Oh, well, I'm very sorry, madam, but your flat is on fire. 
you, you need to come down here immediately. Now what? A uh, cool. <laughs> Why is belt? <laughs> that whole group is not cool at all. I love them. But mostly Paul. Think how excited she'll be when she realizes her place didn't actually burn down. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow will be the most beautiful day of Sarah Coombe's life. Her apartment will look more amazing to her than any place any of us have ever lived. Here we go. I love Goach Beard. I know I keep saying, like, I love this person, I love that person, but I really do. I don't think we belong here. Knock that shit off. Mm-hmm. We belong. Mm-hmm. Now, who wants an overpriced beer? Who wants an overpriced beer that I'm paying for? Find a spot. There you go. Feel free to strut. <laughs> Live your life with the, the confidence that Coach Beard has. What can I get you, sir? Oh, where'd she go? She's cute. Evening, gents. I uh, see so you've met my protégés. I'm Professor Declan Patrick Aloysius McManus. At your service, I assure you the pleasure is mine. But I must tell you, these lads here were the best for the best at Oxford itself. And now we're just having a wee liquid reunion. Good save, Beard. Professor McGonagall taught us a lot. But the main thing he taught us was the value of money. 20 pounds. You're on. I've got five. <laughs> 17, 18. Oh no, the coins. Come on, lads. Kill him. <laughs> nice. What is going on with Beard? I guess this would still be in that same club. Seems weird, right? Very weird. Is he dreaming? Did he get hit in the head? But it's clear to me that Coach Beard doesn't think he's worthy of Jane. Beard's self-esteem is so low, he will need a pep talk to kill himself. And I would like to give that pep talk. Shut up, Thierry Henry. Yeah. I'm sure you know that your trousers are ripped. Is it red dress, lady? Yep. To make it easier for people to kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice place. I'll give you something to wear in the meantime. Will it be a dress? I'd love to see that. People come and go for my life. I've always kept a pair of their trousers. All of them? Those were these. An old lover. Where is he now? Dead. Oh. You dropped your key. He keeps doing that. <laughs> They're fabulous. Maybe it's chemicals or maybe it's pheromones, but I want to be with her all the time. Is that love or do I just have a problem? Why can't it be both? She doesn't really treat you well, though, Beard. Hi, babe. I'm here, but I forgot my keys. Who the fuck are you? I'm Beard. I'm going to punch your fucking teeth out your face and feed them to your asshole like they can do. Why is that like Roy? I'm the fucking dog. You're a dead man. Run. Jeez. What is this episode? It's a big dude. Those are some sparkly pants, Beard. Don't, no, that's a horrible idea. Take the ass beating. Magic. Oi, he hasn't tapped in. 
we're not going anywhere until you tap in. You gotta pay for your ride. You don't have your phone. <laughs> Look at how you're dressed, beard. <laughs> uh, could I please use the phone? The hotel phones are just for guests, I'm afraid, sir. Could I please use your phone? My personal phone. And what would you be using my personal phone for, sir? To call a friend. I'm not falling for that. Well, I'm not trying to trick you. Exactly what a trickster would say. First you book a cab, next thing I know you've geolinked my phone to your network and all of a sudden you and fake Melania have downloaded all my bank details and you're using my identity to shift more <laughs> poppy seeds to your own <laughs> private island. <laughs> no, not tonight. I've been in this game too long now. Well, that went awry. Hello? <laughs> you guys are about to save my life. <laughs> oh no. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Teach Colt here in his magic trousers. Exactly what football's all about. Because it doesn't happen on the pitch. It happens on the street. Or... Good job, coach. What is up with this episode? It's so dark. Clearly he'd rather punish himself than accept the love and support of the people around him. I'm beginning to think Coach Beard hates himself. Shut up, Terry Reed. I don't want anything to happen to Coach. How about we call this a draw? Oh, Coach, come on. Say goodnight, son. <laughs> Unexpected hero. Unless he wants to just kill him. You left these at our flat. Been trying to find you. Well, that's nice. I thought that she was cheating on me. It's just too much. Mm -hmm. But I also realised that maybe I'm more paranoid than most when it comes to that. I don't know. She invited a man she doesn't know up into her flat after he smiled at her a lot. Mary said she's keeping your trousers. Though. It's kind of her thing. <laughs> Fifty-two messages, seventy-two calls, you psycho. She said that she loves you and then acted like a psychopath. She's <laughs> gonna go crazy. Is it our boys? Hey! Where to, sir? Anywhere you want. This night will never end. Home, please. Look at him. He's been through it. Dark episode with Beard, though. Don't break it. <laughs> oh, F. <laughs> what a night you're having. <laughs> Was it a nightclub or was it an actual church with a neon sign? Is there a club in this church? Coach Beard sent us. What is this? Turn them on. What is going on? It's like Harry Potter or something. Is that heaven? No. It's Nelson Road. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's their field! Good for them. They're always at the pub and they're never at the games. Not where I'd picture Beard, but all right. Break out a dance here. There you go. <laughs> Good for you, coach. He looks like he's so much fun. <sighs> Next day, see all right? Our boy sleeping on the, the pitch. Every once in a blue moon, there is a game so awful that the only way to watch it back 
Is it 10 times the speed and with the Benny Hill theme music playing on it? Fucking hell. I think it's somewhat enjoyable. He wore those pants to work. <laughs> Okay. So that last episode with Coach Beard, um, I didn't really expect that. It was very um, different than every other episode, obviously, because one, it focuses on Beard. Uh, two, you kind of get to see a little bit more of that actor kind of doing his thing, you know, uh, picking up an accent, kind of being Irish, pretending that he is an Oxford professor former Oxford professor, uh, going out at night with the boys. Um, very interesting. Got into a fight with Jamie Tart's dad, which I was like, I, I guess the, the last episode or the, the middle episode, I guess, in this series of three was so emotional that when it led into Coach Beard, I had this like melancholy sadness that I thought something really bad was going to happen to Coach Beard. I was actually really afraid. Um, but I'm, I'm glad that like he just kind of had a crazy night. Um, I'm glad that he, um, I don't want to say that I'm glad that he's with Jane. I'm glad that she finally said like, I love you, but I, I feel like she might be kind of toxic. Not sure. He could be toxic as well. We haven't really seen the ins and outs of their relationships, just little tidbits. Um, but, uh, definitely, uh, interesting. And kind of seeing him trying to handle, um, the, the loss at Wembley because it was such a big loss. It was such a big game on such a big stage. And without a lack of a better term, they fumbled it. Beard was really upset. And it seemed like when he was like hearing the commentators like talk, it was like his inner monologue that was actually speaking out loud. But it was just like really weird, like the whole episode, how like certain things were popping up in certain places. And I was like, like, there's no way they're eating at a bar restaurant at a, uh, former church basement. I don't know. I was just like, I feel like this is all part of his imagination. He's going to wake up from a coma or something. Uh, it didn't, it didn't, I, I don't mind episodes like this, but I, I don't want any more like it. But I will say that the, the episode previous, um, with just the dads, because like you see Jamie, like kind of seeing Sam having this great moment with his father on the phone and his father's so proud of him because, uh, the oil company's pulling out of Nigeria and it was because of like what Sam did and he was able to make that happen and he was like so proud of him but it was kind of like his dad kind of took a little bit of his victory and was just like yeah I know it's because I said something and and I, I want Sam to just be proud of himself by himself for himself not because his father and Jamie was actually jealous because he didn't really know the, the context of the conversation. But, you know, he knows that it was, you know, Sam was happy about it, that he was talking with his father. Um, Nate and his dad and him just constantly trying to seek validation from his father and just wanting to hear, like, something validating, like, you're doing a good job. It's like father almost, like, put down the fact that he was on the back of the newspaper. And I feel bad for Nate, but I feel like his behavior is awful and I was 100% like a Nate fan at the end of season one and then the beginning of season two. I'm like, what the hell's wrong with him? And the way he treats Will, not okay. The way he treats Colin, not okay. The way he like speaks in general now and like him looking at his Twitter and I'm just, he's awful. He's awful. If that's what happens when you you climb the echelons of life and, and you get, that's essentially the, the, the picture of too big for your britches. Um, I don't like it. I don't like it. And I know he's just trying to get validation and, and he's not getting it. And maybe if he did, he wouldn't behave the way that he does, which is awful. And why he picked Colin of all people, I have no idea. Well, according to his words, it's because if... Colin were art, he'd be hung in the Holiday Inn. And that is despicable. And that broke my heart. Colin seems like a perfectly good person. Um, and, you know, he might have picked on Nate in season one. Um, but I, I don't see him treating Isaac like garbage. Because um, he thinks he's upper echelon art, apparently. Um, but, like, that's just really shitty in Nate. And um, I feel like we're going to get more of that. And... 
you know, normally people learn their lesson on this show and they change for the better. And then he went right back to that behavior. So I feel like Nate's going to have to fall on his face and, and hit rock bottom in order for me to like trust him again. Cause I really don't. Another father, uh, that seems to be a piece of shite is, uh, Phoebe's dad. Uh, Roy doesn't seem to really like him very much. And Roy is essentially raising Phoebe and is her dad, um, for his sister who seems to always be busy at the hospital. Um, but you know, he's leaving, I don't want to even say it's a bad impression. I think it's a good impression on her. And as the person who, um, said a swear word out loud and then had her godson repeat it, <laughs> you don't necessarily want to be the person that like teaches like a child how to swear. He's also giving her life lessons about like, you know, not, not putting up with a bully and sticking up for yourself and you know, there's, there's so many good things that Roy brings to the table for Phoebe. It's funny that I mentioned at the beginning of the um, reaction that um, Ted's father probably was the reason why he is the way he is and that we know that he, well, we know that he died when he was 16 because um, he just kind of offhand threw that comment out a while back. And for it to be that it was suicide, I mean, that will change the trajectory of your entire life, not even just losing your father. Like having a bad father can shape you, having a good father can shape you, but having your your father leave you that way and how that can shatter a family, you know, and he probably had to take care of his mom, he probably felt responsible for her and probably was always trying to cheer her up because she was probably sad about what happened. I, I can see how he, chose to always be happy and to try to bring out smiles in people and it's because he probably had to do that with his mother. That was such a beautiful scene and having that piggyback Jamie and having what happened with his father in the locker room like I'm so surprised that like more of those guys didn't try to like step up and like say a thing or two in defense of Jamie um, because I know I wouldn't be able to keep my mouth shut and you know it's like, that's his team. Like, that's the people that, like, is his family now. And I didn't want him to invite his father to the damn game. I, I knew it was going to be trouble. He shows up with the wrong jersey on and then comes in and is mocking these men and being a prick to his son. And just, he's so toxic. And when he walks out and, like, the look on Jamie's face, like, I don't think hugs can solve problems. Most of the time when I say, like, I want to hug somebody, it's so I feel like I've taken care of them in my own way. Like, that's not words. Like, I, I don't know. The power of a hug, like, for me, I think is, it supersedes everything. Any words you can say to me, if you gave me a hug, like, that just is everything. And it's funny because I don't like strangers touching me. Anyway, but like, I, I just feel like the power of a hug, but the fact that it came from Roy. <laughs> I can't. Everybody's like, you're gonna love Roy. They really do. <laughs> oh. I think I needed that. I needed, I needed, like, a hug that meant something, and that was the hug that meant everything. And just what a great moment between those two men, and just Jamie allowing himself to break down and be vulnerable in that moment in front of all those men, but in the arms of Roy. Such a strong moment. Oh my god. And then, like, you have, like, this example of, like, Higgins, who, like, has a great family and a great relationship with his wife, and, and, and I feel like, I feel like he could be the dad of the entire team, you know, like, like, I think, I think we're meant to think that it's Ted, but I really think that it's Higgins. I adore that man. They need to get him out of the damn closet though. Not like that, but like, like they need to get him an office. <laughs> Like, I laugh every time because I'm like, where's he going to pop up now? But I'm like, get that man a damn office. I want him to have a high back chair, like a little like drink beverage cart on, on the, the one side and a beautiful view of the pitch on the other. <sighs> Help my man out. Now with the therapy and Ted and him kind of fighting it, I understand like, it's hard. It's hard to open up to somebody. And especially when he went to therapy with his wife and they mentioned it a couple episodes back that, like, 
it felt like the therapist was just there to tell him everything that he did wrong. And like with couples therapy, you don't go to the same therapist that you use on an individual basis. You go to someone who doesn't know either one of you and gets to observe you together. Like that's couples therapy. And, and the therapist that ganged up on them, shame on them. Um, that, that's not right. And that's not a way to help anybody because that certainly didn't help Ted's wife and it didn't help Ted. If anything, it made him have more animosity towards the situation. But I do love how the therapist handled that, you know, and he's like, oh, you're asking for money. You want money to do your job. Like you don't care about people. And she points out, she's like, you still would do coaching without money, but you don't. And you still care about your players, regardless if you get paid. And I, I feel like that was very uh, bold of her to uh, point that out to Ted and especially to be like, you know, not only am I mentor, but I'm your tour mentor. <laughs> it's such a lassoism, isn't it? Um, but I'm glad that Ted and the doctor kind of like had like their moments of opening up to each other and, you know, her saying that like she's scared that she'll never write again. And that's the one thing that brings her joy. And, you know, like Ted opening up about his dad, like sometimes you just have to build that wall of trust. You know, my therapist knows everything about me. I hold nothing back, but I've also been seeing her for roughly 15 years. So it's one of those things. It's just like, she's the person that knows me best. She calls me on my shit and, and, and she's my, my biggest supporter, but you know, like, like there had to be trust that was built up. And that's what I think Ted needed the most was just to, to feel at peace and like he could be open and share and, and. Uh, I think that that, that's wonderful that they finally found that. Although they both have drinking problems. Like I, I'm, I'm the first person to be like, I had a hard day. I need a glass of wine. You know what? I'm, I'm going to do a reaction and I want to relax a little bit more. I'm going to have a glass of wine. Um, but, uh, the, the amount in which they imbibe and for the reason, I think maybe they might, uh, help each other. <laughs> they might they might stop drinking together. I don't know about stop, but, you know, maybe not use it as a uh, vice or a crutch to get through something. And then, of course, Sam. <laughs> Sam and Rebecca. I didn't realize he was 21. Now, look, age differences aside, I think that um, I'm uncomfortable with anything that's five years over or five years younger, just because generational differences, you know, you just understand each other better when you grew up in the same generation. Um, but, you know, I, I, if it's real love, that's great. Um, I just find it hard to think that it's going to have any longevity and they're both great people. And I want them, I wanted it. I, I thought he was like 31. I was like, well, at least that's closer. And I, I do feel like that's a little bit of a Rupert thing where you go for the, uh, the younger person, but I love Sam and I love Rebecca and I love them together. They're very sweet. They're very cute. You know, like they, they get along very well. So I guess we'll see how that goes. Um, I was all, it's funny how I was all for it. And he's like, I'm 21. I was like, oh, <laughs> abort, abort. <laughs> but you know what? If she's happy, they're happy. He's happy. Everybody's happy. Uh, I do think it is a conflict of an interest that he is a player and she is the owner of the team. So I don't think that there's longevity that way either. So there's kind of a couple things they have to get over in order to actually be together. But I feel like... Um, I feel like it'll be good for Rebecca, and I feel like uh, Sam is is definitely somebody who uh, is just a joy to be around. You know, he's the 21 year old Coach Lasso on the team, where he's just always smiles and he's happy, and he just brings a lot of joy. And I think Rebecca needs that in her life. Now, with Keely and Roy and them having their "we need space" thing, and Jamie being the one to kind of like <laughs> teach Roy that lesson without knowing that he taught Roy that lesson <laughs> is delightful. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I couldn't imagine living together, working together, going home together, sleeping together, waking up and wash, rinse, repeat, and just always having somebody right there. That would be a lot. That'd be a lot. It is a lot. It is a lot. And Keely finally snapping. It's funny because I was just like, I was like, yeah, Keely will never lie to you. She's always so honest, but like she was holding back, saying something. And it's funny that like that Sex in the City episode was playing in the background and I was getting riled up by Carrie because she drives me crazy. I think she's absolutely toxic. Um, but uh, I, I was like, 
that plus Roy talking over top of the program would drive me crazy. And then the direct vicinity in which he was in, it was like, can you like sit on the other end of the couch or the chair or go upstairs? Like, do you have to be right here right now talking while I'm watching my stories? So <laughs> I get it. I get the snap. Um, but I'm, I'm really glad that uh, he like drew her a bath and I was like that doesn't fix anything but then he's like and I'm leaving for three hours you will not hear a peep from me that's the good stuff right there that's the good stuff all she was missing was her book quite frankly <laughs> or a book I think he was reading she needed a book not a laptop not a phone just a nice little book okay guys if you want to watch the full length reaction to these episodes they will be available on my patreon a lot of crying on that second one a lot a lot of ugly faces a lot of wet face I'm probably gonna have a hard time watching it back. But in the meantime, like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Rupert, Jamie Tart's father, and Nate. They're on my shit list, they're on my shit list. I think Rupert's never gonna get off my shit list. Um, Jamie Tart's dad, he's just awful. He's just awful. I want the best things in the world for Jamie and I want his father to have nothing to do with it. Uh, but Nate is driving me crazy. At this point in this season, because please no spoilers, but like, were you kind of sick of Nate? Because I'm kind of getting sick of Nate. I absolutely loved and adored him and I wanted nothing but the best for him. And now I'm sorry that he got what he got because it's turned him into a horrible person. <clears throat> but like, how did you react to uh, Ted's dad? Heartbreaking, but it informs so much. Like Jamie's father informed so much about why Jamie was the way he was and, and, and how much of a better person he's become fighting that adversity. And then, you know, like Ted's dad, like that was a shock, but how'd you guys feel about that hug? Oh my God. And then of course the, the coach beard episode, like, um, it was fun. It was interesting. It was really great to see like more of coach beard. Does, have we ever learned his first name by this point? If we have, if we learn it in future episodes, uh, don't tell me, but like, it's kind of like the janitor. Like, it's just Coach Beard. He doesn't have a name. Jan Itor. <laughs> Guys, uh, I absolutely love this show. It knows how to break my heart. And, like, I think I'm mildly traumatized from that episode because I automatically thought the next episode was going to be a dark one. Like, I thought Coach Beard was toast the entire episode. And maybe it's because I'm watching them one after another and, like, there's no break in between. But, like, mild trauma. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm coming back for more. <laughs> so you better come back for more and I'll see you guys like soon. I feel like I'm going to watch more episodes tomorrow because I need to know where everything's going. <laughs> okay, guys, I'll see ya.